Alex Mahan, better known by his online persona Yandere Dev, is a 34-year-old independent game developer. Once beloved by the public, Alex has made a series of choices that would tarnish his reputation and the future of his game, aided in no small part by serious allegations from the past and the present, leaving the support for his upcoming game Yandere Simulator a shell of its former self. But how did Alex go from having his game played by PewDiePie to becoming the laughingstock of the indie game development community? Like most things, the issue lies at the beginning. Before becoming the infamous Yandere dev, Alex was a simple form user. 4chan and Gaia Forms being a place where he would often go to express his dissatisfaction with life. One of these posts in particular would become a meme. In this post, Alex calls himself ugly while embedding links to pictures of his face as proof. And if you know anything about the internet, it's that posts like this are blood in the water. I've been jokingly told several times that I look creepy or have a creepy face. I am 20 years old, but no girl has ever flirted with me or told me that I am attractive, so I am starting to feel that it is true. I guess my face makes me look like a creepy weird guy, so no one wants to get to know me or be around me. I've always been conscious of certain parts of my face. Nose, overbite, large ears. I am wondering if other people are as unhappy with my face as I am. I can't help being born with certain features. It's out of my hands and I can only fix it with surgery that costs thousands of dollars. But is there anything I can do to hide or improve certain features of my face? I am sad that no girl has ever shown any interest in me, and I'm actually really afraid that the problem might be with the very structure of my face itself. Something I can't fix. I'm a nice, friendly guy, and I just want people to give me a chance. In the future, people would also discover a number of disturbing posts that Yandere Dev had made from around this time. From incel rants like this about how no girl will ever love him, to making posts threatening his parents, to creating highly disturbing fan fictions about a number of extremely depraved things. It was very apparent from the start that Yandere Dev was an extremely disturbed individual. With one of the only positive things in his life being the indie game he was developing called Lunar Scythe. Lunar Scythe was the precursor to the now infamous Yandere Simulator, which we'll talk about in depth later on. Inspired by another indie game called Skullgirls, Alex would set out to put his degree in animation to good use. So proud of his work that Alex would send some of his code over to the developer of Skullgirls to give it a review, who proceeded to tell him that the code was terrible. In fact, it was so terrible that he would never work with him or hire him in any situation, prompting Alex to vent his rage on 4chan. I was inspired to become an indie dev by a very well-known programmer who almost single-handedly programmed a fighting game. He was my hero, my inspiration. I decided to try my hand at making a fighting game engine. I worked on it for three months, and I was really proud of it, so I decided to show it to my hero. He was really unimpressed. He asked to see my code and criticized it very harshly. He told me he would never want to hire me or work for me. He told me that my engine was absolute garbage. He told me that with the level of coding experience he had back in 1999, he could have made a better engine than I'd made. Prior to that experience, I was feeling very confident about my coding ability. But after meeting my hero and showing him my game, I just felt like some kind of talentless fraud. I felt like I'd just wasted the last three months. I started wondering if I should abandon the game, abandon my dreams of a career in the game industry. I wondered if I should never have faith in my own talent again. Worst of all, my quote-unquote hero said all of this in a chat room with my friends in it, making me look terrible in front of everyone. I lost the respect of my friends, my self-confidence, my career plans, three months of work, and even my dream of making a fighting game. All in one night. It was devastating. I became depressed. 
I turned my depression into a burning hatred that fuels my desire to develop indie games and eventually outshine that asshole. And it would be this hate that would fuel Alex to announce what he considered to be a game far superior to Skullgirls. He would title this magnum opus Yandere Simulator. For those of you who don't know, a yandere is a trope in anime, often depicted as someone so in love that it drives them to murder. And Yandere Sim would be a Hitman-style game modeled after this trope, where the main character, creatively named Yandere Chan, hunts down romantic rivals. Alex, now going by his infamous moniker Yandere Dev, would take to 4chan, proclaiming that Yandere Simulator was going to be the ultimate anti-SJW game. And despite his attempts at drumming up support for the game this way, they were often met with ridicule. Once again, fueling him to create the best sim that he could, and by 2015, he had completed a very rough demo, so that people could play the game and that he could fix bugs that they would find. He would have no idea just how viral this version of the game would become. The attention of some massive content creators would take the hype for Yandere Sim to the moon, and Alex would capitalize on this, using the hype for many things. Recruiting volunteers, starting a Patreon, and building a YouTube channel with over 2 million subs as of today. But not every aspect of his newfound internet fame would be a net positive for him. He began to receive criticism about a number of things pertaining to the game. First being the game's god-awful coding. In fact, it is so bad that it is often used by the coding community as an example of how bad code can get. The poor quality of the code leads to many game-breaking issues that would plague Yandere Simulator to this day, such as low FPS, frequent crashes, graphical issues, and ridiculously long loading screens. And it wasn't just the awful code that people were critical of. Yandere Simulator also faced a number of moral issues. First being the sheer number of reused or stolen assets in the game. Something that Alex would excuse, stating that it would all be changed when the game was officially released, this was just for development purposes. Second was the extremely controversial panty shot mechanic, where players were highly encouraged to take these pictures because they were the quickest way to get points in the game. As valid as all of these criticisms are, they did nothing. And every single problem I mentioned still plagues the game today. And it's not like Alex hasn't had every opportunity to fix these issues. He once partnered with a development team called Tiny Build, who specialized in helping indie game developers finish their games. They were generous enough to send him a professional coder who would come in and fix all of the fundamental issues that I previously mentioned. After Alex had witnessed some of the changes the professional had made, he immediately fired him, stating that the code was oversimplified, effectively ending Tiny Build's interest in partnership with him. But Yandere Dev's terrible treatment of people he works with is not just limited to Tiny Build. Yandere Simulator had a team of unpaid volunteers working on it. We're talking voice actors, people who are working on graphics, all kinds of things. The only thing that Yandere Dev himself seemingly worked on was the coding, and then of course, micromanaging every other aspect of the game. The volunteers were hoping to get their names out there with a project that had generated a fair amount of hype. Alex would take advantage of this, being extremely demanding, often insulting the quality of their work and sometimes not even crediting them at all. Many volunteers would leave because of this kind of treatment. And if they displayed any criticism, Alex would kick them off the project. A common theme for Yandere Dev is his inability to take criticism. He would become infamous for banning people from his Discord. And when speedrunners see an opportunity, they strike. 
Here is the Discord ban speedrun world record. Oh, time to get me banned really fast. Alright, so it started. And I got. Did I just get banned? Wait, there's no way. Wait, what? Did I just. Did I... Yeah, your fucking name! Your name got you banned! This guy was literally banned within the second of joining Yandere Dev's Discord because of his username. But ruling his Discord with Orwellian authority was not enough. He also purchased the official Yandere Sim subreddit for $3,000 just to implement the same kind of censorship there. And even though Yandere Dev was trying to hide any piece of negative information about him, he could not hide from what was about to be released. Fast forward to 2023, and Yandere Simulator has been in development for nine years years. Alex has accumulated over $200,000 from people supporting the game, and it is still riddled with all of the issues that I previously stated. Despite all of this, Yandere Simulator has a small but dedicated following that would grow even smaller when some very disturbing phone calls and Snapchat messages would be brought to the public's attention. These phone calls proven to be Yandere Dev, and these Snapchat messages, which are highly expected to be from him, are from a minor. And though I'm not gonna show them here, I'll link an amazing video where someone goes through them in depth. The gist of it is, is that these phone calls and these Snapchat messages are filled with grooming behavior. And this is not the first time that Yandere Dev has been accused of this. Years ago, there was an extremely similar situation, and though evidence was presented, this was mostly swept under the rug, unlike his most recent allegations, which have been covered by a wide variety of YouTubers, some of them being pretty big channels, allegedly prompting Yandere Dev into threatening the victim with legal action, causing her to recant her statement out of what many believe to be fear. Alex would initially remain silent, hoping that this would all blow over like the last time, but after realizing that it wouldn't, he made a post to his official website where he vaguely addresses the situation. And I want to read an excerpt for you guys, because it truly shows that he's not sorry. You've probably heard some really concerning stuff over the last few days. You might have seen a video that left you feeling worried, disappointed, and wondering what I have to say for myself. There's a part of me that wants to say, no, you don't understand. The video was edited in an extremely dishonest and misleading way, blah, blah, blah. But no, I'm not going to focus on that. There's a part of me that wants to do what I usually do and type out a massive essay where I overly explain absolutely every detail about the entire situation, provide context to absolutely everything, go point by point down the list to every possible fact that could make the situation easier to understand. But no, I'm not going to do that. This isn't a blog post about how, actually, you see, I didn't really do anything that bad if you consider all the facts. I'm just going to take accountability and own up to a really, really huge mistake that I've made. A few months back, a fan of the game DM'd me wanting to chat. I normally turn fans away and tell them I'm busy, but in this case, the fans seemed really funny and interesting, so I agreed to talk. After around two months, I agreed to do a voice chat with her. Right off the bat, she let me know that she was 16. At the time, I didn't even perceive this as a problem. Why do I care what her age is? She's just a funny fan of the game who wants to talk to me. No big deal. I rationalized to myself that it was fine. Yandere Dev is gonna sit there and act like he's owning up to his mistakes, when literally towards the top he says, I'm not gonna sit there and tell you how you don't have all the facts and you're misled. It is this arrogant, pompous nature that I find almost as insulting as all of the horrible things he's being accused of. The way he treats his audience, his victims, hell, even the people who are giving up their free time to work on his game, 
is absolutely atrocious. And throughout all this, support for the game has dwindled, and so has support for Yandere Dev himself. These allegations, along with his inability to take criticism, has doomed Yandere Simulator, making it the laughing stock of indie game developers, and his reprehensible personal behavior makes him no different. Though at one point in time, his game could have been successful, no one ruined that but him. And that's all we have on the Yandere Dev situation today, guys. Kind of a little bit of the past, a little bit of the present. Just wanted to get everybody caught up, because I'm sure that there's more to come. I want to thank you guys for watching once again, especially till the end. That really helps the channel out. Big shout out to my tapists, my beloved channel members. Thank you guys for all the support. I really can't thank you guys enough. We just hit 75,000 subscribers, and I never thought I'd get here, let alone be blessed with the absolutely amazing community that every single one of us have helped build. From the bottom of my heart, Thank you guys. I hope that you all have a wonderful night, and be sure to keep it Kiwi.